Kirk from Cherries with Army, the AFC Bournemouth fan channel on YouTube. You can just search cherrieswitharmy.co.uk. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram. We'll be covering Bournemouth Tottenham this weekend, so feel free to pop over, have a look at the match preview, match day vlog and match reaction at full time. Bournemouth this season, though, what's it been like? 11, 12 games in, however many we've played. Well, it's a bit of up, a bit of down. We were back on the up and slightly now on the down. We had a great start to the season. We beat, we fought a very good Aston Villa side. They actually ended up being a poor side under Steven Gerrard. But we did get a clean sheet and a win in the first opening game. 2-0 and it was a great start. But the next three would be a tough watch under Scott Parker. We'd lose against Manchester City, expected. Lose against Arsenal, also expected. And lose heavily against Liverpool, expected. However, the manner of the defeat and his press post-match performance was quite disgusting, quite disturbing. He threw the players under the bus. There was no alignment between him and the board. And that was never going to end well. It lasted about 48 hours and he was given his marching orders. So Gary O'Neill was given the job of being interim for the time being to try and lift the players, get some points on the board and make us competitive, which he has done. He did initially and he got us points, a draw against Wolves at home, Brentford at home, Newcastle on the road. We got a draw against Fulham. We picked up wins after being 1-0 down against Leicester City. We came back against Nottingham Forest to win 3-2. And it was all OK. You know, there were actually some fans that were, were actually asking for Gary O'Neill to have the job permanently. But within that, it was a bit of lady luck. There was some overthinking of the opposition in his formation and his tactics. And that would come back and bite him, especially recently. We we were expecting to beat Southampton at home, a poor Southampton side. But we set up really weird, playing players out of position. He swapped and changed players throughout the game. They took the lead early on, had something to hang on to. And we were very poor on the ball. Deliveries from crosses were not very good at all. And we didn't create anything, didn't cause any serious hurt towards their goalkeeper. And they, they took all three points. So we went into our last fixture which was against West Ham at the London Stadium. We thought, OK, he went unchanged, but was he going to maybe play players in the right positions? He sort of did do that. But again, his pragmatic approach was tough to watch. We didn't really set ourselves into the game. We didn't get on the ball. We were poor on the ball when we had it. But ultimately, the first goal in the game against West Ham would go to VAR. A few VAR decisions we've had against us, more than one, and it's not even in itself out. A handball in the build-up to the goal, well, I think everyone on the planet thinks it's a handball unless you're at Stockley Park and they decide it's not a handball because it doesn't directly lead to a goal, but the goal comes three seconds after. The West Ham player handles it, so very, very weird. And we go 1-0 down, frustration within the team, frustration within Gary O'Neill. We come back out, we try and change things, we try and get the likes of Jordan Zamora and Jaden Anthony in the game. A partnership that worked very well in the Championship, but not played a lot together this season. And we were better on the ball, but couldn't really create anything. And when you lose your top striker to injury in that game, you're always going to panic. And we also lost our goalkeeper Neto, although we do have a good backup in Mark Travers. West Ham would score a second goal, which would be another VAR decision, probably more likely to be a handball, although I'm not sure it's directly on the hand. I think it catches his chest first. So is that handball? Not sure. Really bored of VAR now. It's getting really frustrating. Who knows what the handball rule is anymore. But we lost the game 2-0. And this is now leading us to Tottenham, a side that have struggled to win games recently. And I don't know if the fans are getting on the back of Antonio Conte at the moment. I think he is a good manager. But again, another pragmatic manager. Someone who likes to think about keeping the goals out before scoring them. And I'm sure Tottenham fans like to enjoy football and be on the edge of their seat. And, and they're probably not getting that. But you've got a good team. Tottenham have got a good team. They've got a good attacking players. I don't know if you've got any injuries at the moment. But when you've got Harry Kane up top... You're always going to have a chance at scoring a goal or two. So we're going to have to be on our game defensively. And going into this fixture, we've got to try and bounce back. It's, it's two losses for Cherries back to back. And we're not looking like scoring and we're conceding goals. So it, it's not great signs for us at the moment. But in the Premier League, you never know anything can happen. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that Do Tottenham don't find their shooting boots and, and absolutely blow us away. I hope we can be competitive, stay in the football match. But at home, we've got to show a little bit more in this fixture. We've got to maybe get the likes of Jordan Samore and Jaden Anthony in the starting lineup 
and we've got to show something going forward. We can't just sit back and, and hope that Tottenham don't score. There's not many teams that can shut out football teams in the world and we're likely to concede a goal. So that means we're going to have to score more than one to win the fixture. But a draw would be good in this game if we're unable to get one. Who, who knows? I mean, looking back at the fixtures of the games between the teams, we've had a few heavy defeats against you. We had a good game in your current stadium a few years ago where we came back from 3-0 down to lose 3-2. I mean, the fa favourite for me is the 1-0 win that we got at home. Mark Travers had, to, had an absolute freak performance as a goalkeeper and we thought he was going to kick on from there. And he's had a, a few tough seasons, but he, he has come good. He, he got golden glove last season in the championship. So he, he's, he is growing nicely as a goalkeeper, but he had an absolute brilliant performance on that day. Kept out Tottenham, kept a clean sheet. And I think that's our only main win in the league, definitely. There's not many wins against, against Tottenham. So that's definitely my favourite. I'm going to forget the ones where we got absolutely hammered. And I'm hoping that that doesn't repeat itself on Saturday. So going to go into this fixture. Bournemouth need to get some points on the board. We've got three league games left before the World Cup. We need to get something on the board again. We need to stop the rot, stop the losses. We need to make sure we're not in the relegation zone before the season is stopped ahead of the World Cup in Qatar. I'm going to, well, look, my head says it'll probably be a Tottenham 2, Bournemouth 1. If we can maybe get a few decisions that go our way, hopefully VAR can stay out of it, would, would be nice for a change. Uh, we might get a 1-1. One, one. Um, so we'll see what happens. But we're going to have to be very, very good. And Tottenham are going to have to have an off day. And they've had a few lately. So that's uh, my thoughts for this game. Bournemouth not in great form. We're not looking like scoring. But the Premier League, football, anything can happen. You never know the Cherries could get a result.